Hey, Lixa is a tech company that is focused on building and buying innovative and disruptive technologies in health technology, clean water, green tech as well. And with me is CEO Ian Parker. Uh, welcome, Ian. Good to see you again. Great Not to see you. Not on Zoom, which is great nice. to see. You. So yeah, it's great to be back here. So give me an update on how Lixa is doing. So right now, uh, the primary focus is completing the prototype, the mass production prototype for the global aqueduct unit. Um, we have secured our manufacturer. And that's probably the biggest news that we've had in, you know, recently. Uh, it's a great manufacturer down in South Carolina. They've actually dedicated 150,000 square feet to, to manufacturing the, the initial units that we're going to require. Um, so that process is ongoing right now. We're, we're really excited about that. It's, it's happening fast and uh, it's accelerating at the end here. So explain that, the Global Aqueduct. What is that? What will it do? Sure. So the Global Aqueduct, picture a... Uh, almost like a small refrigerator you'd see in an office somewhere. Uh, that that little unit there, that's that little square unit. It's about maybe takes up about four square feet. That produces about 200 liters of water directly out of the atmosphere with just a small solar panel to power it. Okay. So it's a game changer when it comes to the world water crisis. As you know, we got water problems pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Um, not just in Africa and you know Caribbean and oh, South in America. Western U.S. is yeah. every day. It feels in Mexico, like, yeah. Arizona, California. Mm -hmm. So, it's um, it's an important it's an important contribution to to where we need to go. You know, in terms of sustainability, and we're excited to provide it. So it, it uses solar energy takes water out of the air and makes clean water. Mm -hmm. What it's actually doing is freezing the water vapor directly okay. out of the air. Um, and so basically think of what's happening on the top of the mountains, top of Mount Everest, okay. for mm -hmm. example. It's, you know, it's so cold up there, it's just freezing the water vapor directly out of the air. Mm -hmm. And that's what the unit is doing. Okay, interesting. And there was just a big order out of South America for these, right? Not, not an order. We, uh, we started securing indications. Okay. Uh, just so we could get an, a sense of how much capacity we would need in mm -hmm. terms of going to market. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the initial interest was, uh, I think, exceeded our, 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 our initial anticipation. Um, so that those that, that was for seventy five million dollars um, in in indications. Okay. Um, they're not orders yet, but they will. You know, hopefully we can turn them into those yeah. soon. Um, I guess the exciting part of that is that you know that's fi that represents about five thousand units in a forecast, and of those five thousand units, you know, when they're fully deployed, they would be producing close to three hundred and sixty million liters of water a, a year. A year, for, okay. For those communities. Yeah. How big of a market? could this potentially be for these particular aqueducts? It's, it's an enormous market. Um, I would break it into three different categories. You'd have uh, the United Nations and NGO market or uh, non-governmental organization market. That's more of a charity and humanitarian. Um, that's probably about $114 billion a year for the foreseeable future okay. to address so the crisis. So just for that one, just okay. For that. Uh, military, based on our conversations with, with experts on the DOD side, uh, we're looking at probably about $15, million, $15 billion in, 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 in terms of a market. Mm -hmm. um, and I say those are our two primary markets right now. And then the municipal water side is, yeah. is, is just, it's not even, it, it's, it's just such a big number. Well, I was going to say, surely quantify. government, uh, so, like cities would be interested absolutely. in this too. Um, now, there are some competitors. What separates Helix's technology versus what's already out there or being worked on. Sure. So in terms of um, the global atmospheric water generation market, it's never really taken off. And, and some of the problems that, the, the, that have been or the challenges for that market have been that the units cost too much money, mm -hmm. they require too much power, they take a lot of maintenance. So we've eliminated all of those. The unit is inexpensive. We don't have to operate on a grid. So your cost of operating the units is very low. And maintenance on these units is going to be, you know, is expected to be pretty low. Okay. So that's, that's what really separates us. And nobody has, nobody has the technology that we have. Nobody's done it the way we've done it in terms okay. of freezing the water vapor out of the air, which is why we've patented. Um, I was just going to ask about that. This seems like a, a patent. So explain that, the, the patents that you have and are working on. So we filed for patent protection. Uh, we've cleared the international search on, 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 the, initial, on the initial patents. Um, it's, it is a novel device. Um, so we're, we're seeking to get those, those patents issued, but we have filed under the Patent Cooperation Treaty in 132 countries, mm. which is okay. a lot. 
yeah, that's almost every country in the world, I think. So yeah, pretty close. <laughs> that's pretty close. <laughs> All right, any plans to uplist or what are you looking at in terms of the company? Yeah, this, uh, this looks nice here. It would look good to have the ticker symbol here, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yes, we, we, are, uh, we are preparing ourselves for, for a, a national listing. Uh, we're doing all the things that we need to do to, to prepare ourselves for that in terms of corporate governance, uh, corporate controls. We just finished two years of audits. Uh, we have another year of audits that's getting done now. Uh, so we're doing all the things that are necessary, and you know we, we are working with, with people here in the city to, to ensure that we, we get to that goal. And get there. Well, and you mentioned the United Nations, and I imagine this is a company that fits with the ESG goals that um, kind of, you know, so many people are pushing for these days. Uh, I, so. I would agree with you, and, and I, I think, you know, not only the ESG goals, but also the uh, sustainability goals that the, the UN has put forth. They have 17 sustainability goals that they're trying to hit. Uh, by 2030, not to say that they're on target for that right now, but you know, hopefully we can make an impact on that. And right now, our technology would impact 12 of those 17 okay. goals. Okay, fascinating, Ian. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep.